I give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, which in Hebrew are the wonderful names of the Creator, our Heavenly Father, I Am, which this world has named God, and His beloved anointed Son, which this world has named Jesus. I give honor, respect, and thanks to all the true, faithful, and sincere apostles, elders, prophets, and torchbearers of the nation of Israel who have willingly endured and risked much to bring forth the truth. Thank you, brothers. In this chapter, we are continuing the conversation of we in the flesh can't know all things. This is a message to our brothers and sisters of the nation of Israel, the mighty nation of Israel being the so-called Negroes, the so-called Latins, Hispanics, and the so-called Native Americans. We want to question Yahweh the Most High Power, the creator of heaven and earth, the creator of all things, the creator and the destroyer. We want to know why, why, why many of the nation of Israel can't even handle what the Father has already said would occur through the prophets. Can't even deal with the prophecies of the end times of this current world. World meaning time frame, age, span of time. About the demise of this last wicked kingdom. Can't even deal with that. And yet want to know the workings of the mind and the heart of Yahweh, the Most High Power, the Creator. So in the last chapter, we discussed about not asking why, but asking what? What has the Father said? And where? Where are we in the timeline? One of the ways that the Bible is set up is as a timeline. Old Testament, Apocrypha, New Testament. The beginning to the end. Not necessarily in order because the end is spoken about in the Old Testament. It's spoken about in the Apocrypha and it's spoken about in the New Testament. So what has the Father said about where we are currently today and where are we currently today? The first scripture we're going to in this chapter is the second book of St. Timothy, chapter three, verse one. This know, not guess at, not wonder at, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. We are in those perilous times. Again, if we look at our brothers and sisters of the Northern Kingdom, the so-called Latins, Hispanics, and the so-called Native Americans, in Mystery Babylon, they were separating children from their parents, just like the father described through the prophet Moses in Deuteronomy 28 in the curses that the Father would bring upon us. If you were trying to cross into Mystery Babylon from Mexico, they were going to give you some hefty fines. They were going to put you in prison. And you know a lot of our brothers and sisters got shot down or died in the desert trying to come across. Perilous times. The murder rates in many South American countries are staggering. Staggering perilous times. But here is a sign and a message that the father left behind. The second book of the prophet Ezra chapter 13 verse 23. He that shall endure the peril in that time hath kept himself. So as we just read in 2 Timothy 3 and 1, perilous times. Perilous times. We don't get to ask why. The Father has a purpose, but through the prophets, he has said to us, perilous times are coming. Now, he that shall endure the peril in that time hath kept himself. What does that mean? The second book of St. Timothy, chapter 3, verse 12. Yea, and all that will live godly in the anointed Yahawashai shall suffer persecution. What are you wearing those fringes for? What, you think you're one of those Jews in the Bible? The brothers who come out here and speak this word in truth and sincerity know what's on the line for them. We are in the enemy's backyard talking about his destruction. 
as it is written. And as you can tell in the news over the last year or so, they are now targeting the Israelites. That incident in Washington, D.C., this shooting in Jersey City, these events will continue to ramp up to discredit us. Those who stand up and speak this truth and put this word out here are being persecuted and we will continue to be persecuted. And yet, this is how we keep ourselves, by standing for Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. The second book of St. Timothy, chapter 2, verse 3, Thou, therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahweh Shai, the anointed. This is how we keep ourselves. We endure hardship and persecution and mocking as a good soldier of our king, our king of kings, our lord of lords, our savior, our high priest. We endure because currently we are the army in this world, world meaning time frame, age, span of time. We are the spiritual army of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. The one third who stand up and acknowledge the truth of this word and acknowledge Yahweh Shai and acknowledge the one who sent him, Yahweh. Verse 4 No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. We discussed that in the last chapter. The second book of the prophet Ezra, chapter 7, verse 16. Why are you worried about this present life? Think about what is to come. So why should we entangle ourselves with the affairs of this life? The politics, the policies, the morals, the values, the drama, the quote unquote freedom and liberty that we are supposedly given in this world. It's the freedom to turn our backs on the Father. We don't entangle ourselves in these things. We say, I stand for Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Here's what my Father told me to do. And with that in mind, we do what Yahweh Shai said, which is be wise as the serpent. We are in the last of our last captivity. We must follow the laws of this current kingdom. So it's a, so it's a balancing act. But we do not entangle ourselves. We do not actively go and say, yes, I want to be, I want to be, I want to immerse myself in this world. No. Remember, we're pilgrims. We are in a foreign land on a sacred journey. And that journey is back to the gates of the kingdom, returning home to the Father. But we're pilgrims. We're strangers in a foreign land. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Yahweh has chosen us to be his spiritual soldiers here, in this world, in this last wicked kingdom, to bring the fire of this truth here, physically. This is how we keep ourselves, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Love the Father. So we don't entangle ourselves in the affairs of this current world. We do that which pleases the Father. And what else do we do? The second book of the prophet Ezra, chapter 16, verse 76. Now we brought this out in the last chapter and we're going to continue to work with it. And the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith Yahweh the Most High Power, let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. So we don't get entangled in this world. Now, how do we do that? The Father has created this vessel, this flesh. He has placed our souls in these vessels, which he also created. And these vessels are also filled with spirits. Ideally, if you're an Israelite, the, the main spirit in you is the spirit of the most high power spirit of the comforter other spirits will dwell in there and from time to time we have to put those other spirits into subjection the spirit of lust the spirit of covetousness the spirit of rage don't let giving into these spirits force you to continually sin and weigh you down and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. Do not let these spirits lift themselves up above the most high in your vessel. Where you want to go sin more than please the Father. None of us are perfect. 
but don't let them lift themselves up and be exalted inside of you. This is how you keep yourself. Remember, we as the nation of Israel are like the bride waiting for the bridegroom and we must keep ourselves. No, I am betrothed unto Yahushai. I'm going to wait for him. I'm not going to go around. I'm not going to go around and fool around with anybody else. I'm not going to let anyone touch me. <laughs> I'm going to keep myself clean. As the one third of the nation of Israel, we, we are saying, I want to keep myself presentable for my husband. Remember, nations in the Bible are referred to as women. And this is how we keep ourselves. We don't let wicked spirits run wild in our vessels. We don't let sin overcome us continually. We don't do that which is pleasing in this world. We do that which is pleasing unto the Father. Again, none of us are perfect. So what is the Father promising for those of the nation of Israel who endure? Who endure hardships and hardness and peril and perilous times and keep themselves. Let's return to the second book of the prophet Ezra, chapter 13, verse 23. He that shall endure the peril in that time hath kept himself. They that be fallen into danger are such as have works and faith toward the Almighty. So if you're here at the end, in the last days, in the perilous times, they that be fallen into danger are such as have works. You've earned your spot here. You've earned your spot here at the end to go through these perilous times, to go through this purification. They that be fallen into danger are such as have works and faith toward the Almighty. We believe. We believe in the anointed, Yahweh Shai. Prince of all power, King of kings of the mighty nation of Israel. And we believe on the one who sent him, Yahweh, the most high power, the king of everything. Verse 24, know this therefore, that they which be left behind are more blessed than they that be dead. None of us can ask the father why. He's not going to answer that. But if you're willing to turn unto the Father and look at what he has said to the prophets and to us, the nation of Israel, through the prophets, why am I here in these perilous times? Well, if you're an Israelite turned unto the Father, it's because your soul has works and you have faith in the Father. And you are blessed to be here. You're going to see, most high willing, you're going to see the fall of this last wicked kingdom on the earth. Most high willing, you will see the return of Yahawashai and the heavenly host. What a sight. I mean, imagine our forefathers when they walked through the Red Sea. No one's ever seen anything like that before or since. The forefather Noah watching the entire earth be drowned. I mean, most high willing, you'll get to see these things and be delivered from them. The Father has a purpose for all things. Make no mistake about it. World War III and the nuclear destruction of America are coming. It will coincide exactly with the return of our King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Savior, High Priest and Brother, Yahawashai. Thus saith Yahweh. Philippians 2, 9-11 Wherefore, Yahweh also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Yahweh Shai every knee shall bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Yahweh Shai is Lord, to the glory of Yahweh the Father. As it is written, thus saith Yahweh, and nothing can stop it. This is a final warning, Israel. Shake off this world, remember who you are, and come home. All praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai.